good morning students of class 12 you are all aware of the tough situation we are going through but due to the situation we will not waste our precious time and start with our biology lessons of class 12 the first chapter which we will be dealing with is evolution this is a very big chapter so we will be continuing in parts so this is part 1 origin of life so let's get started children before we start with the actual chapter of evolution let us first go through some of the basic points which our scientist have given based on certain experiments done that what was the year or the time when universe earth or life originated so the first one is universe was formed about 20 billion years ago earth was formed nearly 4.5 billion year, years ago and life originated about 4 billion years ago now you might be thinking that how did these uh, scientists come across all these uh, data it was actually there are several methods which are uh, performed by our scientists like carbon dating and all these uh, experiments are done to find out these years when our universe earth or life originated okay scientists also told about the conditions on earth which was prevailing at that time during the time of origin they were high temperatures the earth was very very hot that time it was not a very pleasant weather that time the lighter elements formed the gases like the gases which were present at that time were methane ammonia hydrogen helium all these gases were present and water which was present was in the form of vapor why in the form of vapor water was present because of this high temperature water did not exist in liquid form that time it was as water vapor the heavy elements like iron nickel formed the core of the earth the core of the earth was formed by these heavier elements uv rays that is the ultraviolet rays they were the main source of energy that time and this uv rays favored photochemical reactions which uh, when uh, all the chemical reactions which were uh, going on were favored all by these uv rays one very important thing you must have noted that while i was talking about the gases i did not mention oxygen so there was no molecular oxygen present at that time very very important point on which questions are asked and as you know that whenever molecular oxygen or uh, oxygen is not present the condition is reducing so the condition or the atmosphere was a reducing atmosphere no oxidation was taking place at that point of time electric discharges were there which were produced these electric discharges mainly came uh, due to this lightning and thunders volcanic eruptions huge and many volcanic eruptions were there at that time when life originated on earth let us now go to the next slide children now let us start with the theories the actual theories which were given by different uh, scientists uh, on the origin of life the first one which was given was a theory of special creation this theory was actually based on religious beliefs it was believed that god created life in heaven and those or the life which was created in, in heaven those living forms were placed on earth now to understand this theory of special creation let us take a couple of examples according to bible there is a chapter in bible called genesis and this chapter deals with uh, origin of life on earth okay so according to this chapter the first man which was created or who was created was adam and the first woman who was created was eve i think all of you have heard of adam and eve isn't it now 
God created Adam and Eve and brought them on earth. This was the assumption given by the theory of special creation. The next example which we will deal with is according to Hindu mythology. Now what was told according to Hindu mythology? It was believed that Brahma is the creator of this universe. And Brahma created the first man and the name was of the first man was Manu. And the first woman who was uh, created was Shraddha. And according to these two beliefs, uh, that is according to Bible and Hindu mythology, that all these creations were made by God and then they were placed on earth which represented the first living form. But this was scientifically, there was no proof of all these things and then that, that is why these, this theory of uh, special creation was disapproved. Okay. The next theory which we will be dealing with is theory of abiogenesis. Now the term abiogenesis, uh, abio means non-living and genesis means synthesis or formation. So life originated, according to this theory, life originated from non-living things. And this was, uh, this theory was uh, proposed by Van Helmont. Now, uh, if you want to understand this theory, let me again take some examples. Like uh, some of the scientists that time, or Greek philosophers rather, that time who were present like Thales and uh, Xenophanes, uh, they were present. Aristotle to Plato, they told that... Uh, Egypt, in Egypt, the mud of Nile, that is the Nile River, the mud from there, that river created many organisms like frogs, toads, snakes, mice and even crocodiles, they thought. When it was warm, that water on the mud was warmed by sun. Also, some assumptions were made uh, by the philosophers that time that the hair from the white horse, tail of white horse, gave rise to a worm which was known as Gordius worm okay and that worm is considered as the first living organism so these were all uh, very uh, obsolete uh, theories which were or examples which were given that time and there was no scientific proof and hence this was also disapproved and these uh, this uh, abiogenesis theory of abiogenesis was dip, disapproved by uh, certain experiments performed by uh, scientists like uh, Francisco Reddy uh, Spallanzani and Pasteur also. So, we will go to the next theory that is the theory of biogenesis. This theory, according to this theory, it was told that life can arise from pre-existing life only and not from non-living matter. So, this was the theory of biogenesis which told this and this was proved by the experiments of certain scientists who experiments we'll deal with or we'll discuss uh, about those first one is was done by francisco reddy so Fra what francisco reddy told all about this experiment what which he performed now what francisco reddy did was he took flesh or meat and he cooked the meat so that no organisms were left alive in that piece of pieces of meat now he placed those pieces of meat in three different jars. The jars, one of the jars were covered uh, with gauze or parchment paper, uh, you can say, one or muslin cloth and one was sealed and the other was open. So these three jars were there. What Reddy saw was that within a few days, flies were uh, hovering around this these jars and after that he saw that in the open jar in the open jar he saw some maggots maggots means larvae of flies the larva of the flies so he concluded that the flies which were moving or visited that jar laid the eggs on the meat and hence the larvae or the maggots came into this flesh. 
but the other two jars which were covered that is one with the gauze and what uh, one which was sealed there was no development of any maggots or any life there so what was proved was that life can only exist from the pre-existing life or life can arise from the pre-existing uh, pre-existing life which was the flies here okay so this was the reddy's experiment to prove the theory of biogenesis let us go to the next slide next slide so experiment is of pasture that is the lewish pasture form this experiment this experiment is also known as the swan neck class experiment why this was uh, the name given because you here you can see that uh, pasture took some round bottom flask and then he heated this uh, mouth of the flask and then bent it in the form of the neck of a swan and hence the name swan neck experiment now what did pasture do louis pasture took a uh, broth uh, which was broth means a liquid made up of sugar and yeast in a long uh, necked flask and then bent the neck of the flask and then sealed it he boiled this broth in the flask why did he boil this to kill any microorganisms okay which might be present in that broth the curved neck acted as a filter and it was also sealed now what was done it was seen that if this swan neck flask or the curved uh, flask uh, was kept months without disturbing it or anything no life appeared there in the flask but when this neck of the flask was broken it was seen that that in the broth developed colonies of molds and bacteria so what was proved that due to the swan necked uh, shape of the flask the it acted acted as a filter and did not allow the spores of the or the back of bacteria and molds to enter into the flask but as soon as it was broken all the molds and uh, the spores of the molds and bacteria which were present in the air entered into the round neck neck uh, this uh, flask the broth which was present there and these microorganisms developed there so this was again a proof that the broth is did not favored any uh, means uh, life to occur originate there but as soon as the mouth was broken of the flask from the air spores entered and hence microorganisms originated so what was seen here is that life existed or was created from a pre existing form and not from a non living thing but according to biogenesis theory life originated from pre existing life it was told but it does not explain anything about the origin of life nothing was told about the origin of life so this uh, theory was also disapproved some more uh, theories were given by uh, uh, the scientists that time like the uh, theory of uh, panspermia what was told in this uh, theory of panspermia was that that uh, life originated from some extraterrestrial uh, life that is uh, uh, life originated in the outer space and the spores were brought into the earth from um, means other planets along with these meteors and the spaceships okay and uh, th how this is how the life originated in the earth okay so this were some of the other theories which were also given so after this we will take up the actual theory of origin of life that is the modern theory which is also known as uh, the uh, uh, chemosynthetic theory of origin of life uh, which was uh, proposed by oparin and haldane so we will take up that in the next videos now uh, children this is all for today's class i'll be back soon with a next class please go through the theories nicely and understand each and every theory take help of the uh, theory books which are available with you all and i'll be back soon okay thank you very much welcome back children of class 12 let us start our second session of 
biology classes the same chapter evolution this is part 2 children in the previous video uh, we discussed about uh, the basics how uh, what uh, environment was present in the uh, earth on earth that time that is the conditions that is high temperature energy volcanic eruptions lightning all these things were there we discussed we also discussed uh, the different theories given by different uh, scientists that time on the origin of life that is theory of special creation then uh, the theory of abiogenesis that is how from non living things uh, scientists or philosophers told that life existed or life started then we came to the bio uh, theory of biogenesis which were uh, proved very nicely by uh, reddy then uh, uh, this pasture all these uh, theories we saw but all these theories did not prove the origin of life exactly and did not have any scientific proof first of all and also the biogenesis theory told how uh, from a pre-existing life life originated but did not tell how did it originate so all these theories were disapproved and were not taken into consideration then a new theory was given which is known as the modern theory of origin of life we'll deal with it now this modern theory of origin of life is also known as the chemosynthetic theory or the operin halden theory because operin and halden were the two scientists who explained this theory so let us talk about this theory uh, in detail so this theory was divided into three parts the first part is known as chemogeny the second part is known as the biogeny and the third part is known as the cognogeny you can see the three parts i have written on the slide so the first part chemogeny what exactly we mean by that uh, chemogeny word it means chemical evolution biogeny the second part meant biological molecule formation so molecules were formed biological molecules were formed in that part and in the third part that is the cognogeny part their diversification and evolution of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells occurred now children be very clear about the terms origin of life and evolution they are not the same thing origin means how life started and evolution what does that mean that after life has evolved then how that particular organism modifies itself to adjust to the surroundings in which it is living okay so this is evolution they evolve in a better way to live in the surrounding or in a place where they are living so don't confuse between origin and evolution okay so uh, let us deal with the first part of this theory that is chemogeny this chemogeny part was mainly given by operin and helden and what uh, according to operin and helden what exists ex uh, existed at the time of origin of life on earth were certain conditions what operin and helden told that there were certain conditions which were existing at that time in the or uh, surroundings in the earth surroundings or in the earth now we discussed though uh, some of them in the previous video but we'll discuss it again as operin and helden told that high temperature was there that uh, earth was very hot energy was available in two forms what are what were the two forms uv rays and lightning that is ultraviolet rays rays and lightning was the energy form which was available gases were there inorganic uh, gases that uh, that is ammonia carbon dioxide methane was there hydrogen was there helium and water was present in the form of water vapor because it was very hot now what might have happened that time children that the inorganic molecules which you can uh, means which were available that time in the atmosphere the inorganic molecules might have reacted to form simple organic compounds like alcohols aldehydes glycerol fatty acids amino acids sugars and nitrogenous bases that is purines and pyrimidines okay now what does this point mean that is in the presence of the energy which was available that is uv rays and lightning 
what might have happened everything is presumed nobody was present at that time to see what has happened okay or to observe what is happened so everything is presumed that's why might have reacted so most of the inorganic molecules might have reacted in the presence of the energy uv rays and lightning to form these simple organic compounds we just mentioned that is alcohol aldehydes amino acids sugars etc now the next step what might have happened is these simple organic compounds which were formed they by condensation and polymerization form complex organic macromolecules what were the macromolecules which might have been formed polysaccharides fats proteins nucleosides and nucleotides now you saw that in the first step simple organic molecules like sugars were formed so sugars condense to form polysaccharides fatty acids and glycerols might have condensed to form fats amino acids might have condensed to form proteins and nitrogenous bases and phosphate and sugar and all these things combine to form the nucleotides and nucleosides okay now after these uh, reactions which 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 were going on at that time due to the presence of this energy form uv rays and lightning there were also torrential rains torrential rains means means not one or two days raining for continuously for years it might have rained okay and due to the uh, this continuous raining what might have happened water bodies were formed water bodies when uh, these water bodies have formed all these complex macromolecules which were formed might have aggregated there in that uh, water in those water bodies which were formed due to torrential rains due to which a broth formation has or had taken place broth formation means all the chemicals that is uh, the carbohydrates fats amino acids which might have been formed there they probably would mix up with the water bodies the water in the water bodies like sea and all by the process of condensation and polymerization and this broth formation might have taken place so what haldane told specially that the sea water containing molecules of these organic substances in abundance was described as hot dilute soup they this broth is also sometimes known as hot dilute soup or in some of the books you might have also seen a word it is prebiotic soup okay so these words were given so one more question pops up that uh, or sometimes is given that what is hot dilute soup what what do you mean by hot dilute soup or prebiotic soup so when origin of life was taking place at that time torrential rains were there and due to this torrential rains all these complex organic molecules they can by condensation and polymerization they remained in that sea water and this formed the broth or the hot dilute soup okay now after this what happened all these uh, uh, organic molecules or macromolecules complex organic macromolecules which were formed they which were synthesized abiotically no uh, uh, biotic form has uh, till now uh, means uh, uh, has been seen okay so formation of after this what happened formation of large spherical aggregates spherical aggregates from these complex organic molecules which remain suspended in the sea water now what happened i told you that what might have happened in the broth formation took place what did the broth consist of all the macromolecules organic macromolecules and the water of the uh, uh, which uh, was accumulated due to the torrential rains now in that sea water and Uh, this uh, macromolecules which are present they condensed to form large spherical aggregates these large spherical aggregates were formed from these complex organic molecules which remained in the sea water itself and these colloidal aggregates were known as coacervates which later were surrounded by fat membrane and could take up materials from the egg environment and increase in size now what happened actually that uh, oparin told that the complex organic molecules which were synthesized abiotically on the primitive earth primitive earth means that time formed large spherical aggregates big aggregates were aggregates means what the larger macromolecules they came closer together and formed a aggregate which remain there in the sea water 
and these colloidal aggregates were known as coacervates okay now what happened in the next step that these coacervates they were also non living okay these coacervates then got surrounded by a fat membrane fat uh, fatty acids were there already fatty acids glycerol which formed fats were also there so they got surrounded by a fat membrane and they could increase in size how they could increase in size because of uh, this materials which were taken from the environment that's why they could increase increase in size okay now one very important thing i'll tell uh, in this uh, slide about this slide uh, children that is you might be thinking why this all these chemical uh, evolution was possible only in the primitive earth and not now okay the main point which describes that why it cannot be performed or why this chemical evolution cannot happen now and had occurred in the primitive earth because now oxygen is present in the atmosphere which was not present there and why if you are asked a question in the examination that what utility was there that uh, no oxygen was uh, what utility was there in the primitive earth of oxygen not being present in that time the answer is that because oxygen was not present the atmosphere was what a uh, reducing one a reducing atmosphere you know that oxidation of the substances did not take place that's why the due to the absence of this free oxygen on primitive earth the organic molecules remain unspoiled they were not spoiled and hence reacted to produce new and more complex organic compounds okay thus this reducing atmosphere of the primitive earth played an important role in preserving these compounds this is the reason why chemi chemical evolution was possible that time but is not possible during this period okay now we'll go to the into the next slide now we'll start with biogeny in the next part of this modern theory of origin of life now what happens in biogeny we uh, dealt up to the coacervates isn't it now coacervates uh, were non living creatures they were not living creature creatures but these coacervates had uh, the tendency to uh, get covered by a fat uh, uh, fat molecule and they could take up uh, uh, all these uh, substances from the environment and could increase in size now what happened might have happened rather what might have happened inside the coacervates the nucleotides i told nucleotides were the macromolecules which were formed the nucleotides might have combined to form the nucleic acids that is rna and dna so these nucleotides might have formed the nucleotides that is uh, sorry nucleic acids that is dna and rna now the proteins and the nucleic acids together formed the nucleoproteins already proteins were formed in the macromolecules part in chemogeny so proteins and nucleic acids might form the nucleoproteins now with the formation of the genetic material what happened the and uh, the presence of the surface uh, fat fatty acid membrane the coacervates now changed themselves what they changed themselves themselves into the first cell like creature but not cells okay be very clear they first changed themselves into first cell like creatures or uh, cell like structures with the power of division which type of division generally budding okay generally budding was seen that time the scientists presumed that with the power of division and these first cell like structures were known as eobionts or protobionts or the protocells so what was seen when genetic material that is dna and rna might have been formed along with a fatty acid membrane around it these coacervates changed into the first cell like structure which had a little bit power of division when they had these qualities they were known as eobionts protobionts or protocells some of the proteins in these protobionts act as enzymes all of you are very aware in class 11 you studied children that enzymes are mainly what they are proteins i told you that in the reactions uh, earlier reactions proteins might have been formed in the uh, coacervates now these proteins might have changed into enzymes and began metabolic activities okay hence resulted in the formation of prokaryotes and then the eukaryotes so the life 
has already started formation that is biological molecule formation has taken place and that's why it is known as biogeny now let us come to the next uh, or third sub uh, sub part of this uh, theory that is cognogeny now what does cognogeny tell us i told you that cognogeny is what diversification means the groups which evolve or the cell like structures which evolve diverse themselves make different kinds according to the place when in which they are lying there so diversification and evolution of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is cognogeny actually now what happened the first formed living cells utilized the ones uh, living cells when these protocells were formed that is the eobionts protobionts or the protocells were formed these protobionts uh, in these protobionts some of the proteins have already started acting as enzymes and have started metabolic activities already which were considered as the first living cell okay now these first formed living cells then what they did they utilized ready made food means they did not have the power of making their own food from where did they use the ready made food from the sea broth i have already told the sea broth is what they had most of the organic macromolecules complex organic macromolecules and hence they were chemoheterotrophs and also they were anaerobic why as there was no free oxygen present at that time so what they are telling uh, two in the uh, means they are trying to tell in this point is the first living cells means what they are talking about first living cells just after protobionts the protobionts what they did they in their body in their uh, cells the proteins are act, acting as enzymes and they began to uh, start metabolic activities they then took up ready made food from the sea broth and were known as chemoheterotrophs why heterotrophs because they were not preparing their own food why chemo because they were taking chemicals from the surroundings that's why chemoheterotrophs and they were anaerobic why you know that it is because there was no free oxygen then there became a declination of organic nutrients naturally if somebody is using a thing continuously there will be uh, declining uh, declination in the organic nutrients so naturally the organisms that time had to search for some altern alternatives so what they searched for obtaining food they st uh, started searching for different alternatives for obtaining food and so they became the chemo autotrophs why they became autotrophs autotrophs means they could prepare their own food but till now they are taking up chemicals okay but they were searching for for alternative mode of nutrition let us go into the next slide okay so what was seen that these chemo autotrophs which were looking for alternatives why alternatives because their ready made ready made food was already over now these chemo autotrophs later develop chlorophyll in themselves because they are continuously evo evolving okay they are because uh, cognogeny is fully about evolution okay so later developed chlorophyll and chlorophyll development means like these bacterial chlorophyll and all uh, which are present in the bacteria okay these type of preliminary type of chlorophylls were developed so uh, later developed chlorophyll and naturally chlorophyll developed means they could synthesize their food from co2 so your co2 was already available but they did not use any water okay the hydrogen source was not water but it was hydrogen sulfide that is h2s or they sometimes used thiosulfate or hydrogen also instead of water they did not use water they used carbon dioxide and all these hydrogen sources using solar energy okay so solar energy was taken and this carbon dioxide and any other uh, supplement of hydrogen was used to form or to synthesize their own food with the help of chlorophyll so now they could synthesize their own food but they were anaerobic because they did not use oxygen but they were photoautotrophs from chemoautotrophs that is they uh, did not take any chemicals now and they have shifted to photoautotrophs they are preparing their own food with the help of whom with the help of solar energy that's why photoautotrophs so what came the chemoheterotrophs then came the chemoautotrophs and now came the photo autotrophs now in the next point you see then came the first aerobic photoautotrophs these in the previous point we saw an aerobic photoautotrophs okay then came the first aerobic photoautotrophs 
called the cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria means blue uh, green algae like forms but not exactly like them and they released O2 that is oxygen in the atmosphere. So, so by further evolution these uh, anaerobic photoautotrophs developed themselves so that they could uh, now trap the solar energy and they could use the water around them and they could now form the oxygen and they could release this oxygen in the atmosphere. So, after photoautotrophs, the anaerobic photoautotrophs came the aerobic photoautotrophs. That is, they now released oxygen. So, anoxygenic, uh, I think in class 11, I told you about anoxygenic and oxygenic. Okay. So, these photoautotrophs, that is, anaerobic photoautotrophs, they were anoxygenic because they did not release any oxygen. And these aerobic photoautotrophs were oxygenic. That is, they released uh, oxygen during photosynthesis. Now, in the next point, as the number of aerobic photoautotrophs increase, naturally when they are evolving, continuously evolving and they could adapt or adjust into the surroundings in which they are uh, present, their number will be increasing. So, when this aerobic photoautotrophs uh, number increased, O2 was released in the atmosphere. So, large and large amount of O2 was released in the atmosphere. This oxygen reacted with and how they reacted? Naturally, they, you know that there, were, there was mainly methane and ammonia present in the atmosphere. So, this oxygen which was produced by this aerobic photoautotrophs, they that uh, reacted with methane first. See? Methane it reacted with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. It also reacted with ammonia to form oxygen and uh, uh, it also reacted with uh, oxygen to form nitrogen and water. As O2 accumulated in the atmosphere. Now as these photoautotrophs, aerobic photoautotrophs are continuously releasing this oxygen. What happened in the atmosphere? This oxygen was getting accumulated. Due to this accumulation of oxygen, the UV rays which was present, they changed some of the oxygen into ozone and hence came the ozone layer very slowly in, around the atmosphere. So, what happened? When the UV rays converted this oxygen into ozone, this ozone layer came into existence and you know that when hence this ozone layer was formed which blocked the UV light and just the visible light was our main source of energy which came. Okay, next point is once this unicellular organisms developed, the cells gathered to form colonies. Once these unicellular forms were uh, uh, just uh, they came into the, uh, the existence, then they gathered together to form colonies. You have seen Volvox, isn't it? They form colonies. Then later by cell differentiation uh, which occurred to form multicellular organisms over the ages and hence resulted these multicellular organisms. This was the whole process. Now let us sum up what was the stages. We saw that first came the chemoheterotrophs. Okay, first we saw that uh, what came? First we saw the uh, main uh, name when, when we were getting the names. Let us see from there. First we saw coacervates. Then these coacervates uh, converted themselves into protocells or protobions or eobions. Okay, now these protobions then their, their proteins inside their uh, uh, cell they acted as enzymes and they were covered by a fatty layer and then they change into the first cell first living cells okay in the uh, that uh, in that primitive earth now what happened this uh, first living cell they converted themselves into chemoheterotrophs why they were chemo or heterotrophs because they took the ready made fruit food from the sea broth now they evolved themselves into because this uh, food was getting uh, uh, was declining, so they uh, thought of switching into their uh, nutrition mode. So they changed themselves into chemo autotrophs, so that from the chemicals, little bit chemicals which were available, they could prepare their own food. Then after the chemo autotrophs, what came? The photo autotrophs, anaerobic ones, anaerobic photo autotrophs. What they did? They they could utilize the solar energy and could prepare their own food. Next came the aerobic photoautotrophs, which could uh, produce oxygen as well as they uh, were oxygenic. They are oxygenic and hence could produce oxygen. Then after photoautotrophs, aerobic photoautotrophs, uh, this first unicellular organisms were already 
formed and by the cell differentiation and all these processes the cell differentiation of cell led to the formation of the multicellular organism so this is all about the origin part the origin part is complete uh, by the modern cell theory one experiment is there which we will talk about the uh, miller and ure experiment which is in the next uh, uh, slide we'll deal with it now okay children we have miller and ure experiment now what did this uh, miller and ure do okay uh, what uh, experiment did they perform and what was all about the experiment which is performed this is an experimental proof about the formation of the simple organic compounds like uh, this amino acid sugar aldehydes and hydroxy acids what is it all about now what uh, oparin and helden told uh, that uh, these simple organic compounds were formed like sugars and all these this ex this was experimentally in a lab uh, with artificial things and artificial environment as existed in the primitive earth these were performed or these were formed by miller and ure this is all about the experiments which were done now what uh, the uh, this miller and ure uh, did they uh, took up this uh, took this setup which you can see in the slide in this round bottom flask which you can see there are two electrodes okay which uh, you can see this actually substituted the uh, this one uh, lightning and thundering okay which uh, existed in the primitive earth and in that round bottom flask some gases are present uh, that is methane uh, ammonia hydrogen and also water was present okay water vapor was present now what was seen that uh, due to the electrodes uh, which was releasing uh, electric sparks some uh, chemicals were present there which were cooled by a condenser just below this round bottom flask is a cool uh, means a condenser which uh, in which hot water and uh, was uh, means coming out and cool water is was con continuously entering to cool the liquid uh, to cool the gas which was formed this gas was cooled and naturally it, uh, due to the condenser it formed liquid droplets and can you see at the bottom small organic molecules it's written means there it was accumulating now this was again uh, going into another small uh, round bottom flask which was continuously getting heated when it was heated the uh, vapors went into the um, uh, tube there and again uh, fell into the big round bottom flask and this uh, kind of experiment was continuously performed by miller and this uh, you can see at the bottom that small uh, organic molecules which were formed these small organic molecules in the form of liquid which were formed were tested by uh, uh, this miller and ure and it was found that uh, when testing this uh, liquid consist of uh, consisted of uh, some of the amino acids like alanine glycine aspartic acid all were present in this liquid so it was proved that if in a lab so these uh, the all the environment like the primitive earth were uh, means uh, set up and this experiment if it is conducted if here organic molecules simple organic molecules can be formed in the primitive earth also those molecules might have been formed like that so this is all about the miller and ure experiment this miller and ure experiment is sometimes asked in the examination and you have to describe along with the diagram so go through it very nicely uh, children uh, the video should be listened uh, you should hear it very nicely along with the book you should sit and then see the explanation hear the explanation match it with the book and also understand it okay just don't go uh, listen to the video and leave it you will not uh, clear your points okay and uh, i'll be very uh, back with the um, next video very soon that's all for today children uh, we'll meet with the next video very soon thank you very much